All right, hello everyone, and this is going to be a video of me melting some aluminum and making it into an ingot. So, start here with my little furnace, which is the uh, King of Random version furnace, uh, and my it's powered by a little hair dryer I got from thrift store so I just turn it on and blow the little dust out of there because gathers dust when it just sits so my favorite charcoal to use is charcoal ran and my favorite charcoal to use is hardwood by this brand here this cowboy hardwood lump charcoal brand it's uh it's better than the other lump charcoal brands that I've been seen or used before uh so yeah start with char I'm gonna turn it on low or actually high turn it on high and just start get it running so those two little pots I put there are my crucibles. The one in the fire is the graphite crucible, which I I set in the fire while it's turning on, so that so that it heats up slowly with the with it heats up at the same speed as the coal does, which isn't too too fast. It's, it's fast enough. It's slow enough for the graphite to heat up slowly, which is what you want to make it last long. The other one is a steel a steel crucible. Which I was using before I got the graphite one. It was just it's just a steel bucket kind of. Um, there's scrap left inside of it, uh, so I'm gonna be getting that out of there. What I'm doing right here is is uh, hammering up a bunch of my a bunch of radiators that I cut into strips. As well, I'm hammering them up so that I can uh, fit them into the crucible when I need to melt them. I'm I'm putting a lot in this bucket I'm not gonna be able to get to all of this in one video so back to the crucible it is nice and burning up the temperature so I take the other crucible out just to kind of set it down and I noticed that the spark could kind of hit my car so I <laughs> backed it up a little bit uh, so I put the steel crucible in there which uh, that requires a, requires a lot more attention and kind of uh, a little bit more work because you have to make sure it never gets too hot in one place, which is why you'll watch me uh, continuously turn it to make sure that one side doesn't get too hot because this this cruise uh, this furnace can heat uh, can kind of melt steel a little bit, and since it's steel, it can it can melt if it gets too hot. So I usually don't fill it with coal. I don't put it at the highest temperature, and I continuously turn and push the coals around to kind of vary the heat so it doesn't melt through. I've I've broken through maybe like five different steel crucibles already lost my metal through holes in it. This little part here with the the large amount of sparks I, that does look like a lot of sparks like I guess it's just what the lump charcoal does. Uh, none of those sparks are really too hot they just like die right away so I almost I think I only get hit once in this whole video on skin um, so yeah, I you'll see me walk right in front of them and get really close with my face in them, and it doesn't really do anything. Um, so you can see the steel on the crucible is really heating up at this point. Uh, if I zoom in, you'll see the metal is actually... The aluminum that's uh, stuck inside is really melted and already puddling at the bottom. So I'm going to turn it a little bit because you can see the big red spot at the bottom. That's the spot that I don't want to. I don't want it to spread too far or get too bright. Um, so now I'm, I'm just going to put it straight up, so that the puddle will uh, reach the bottom, and also the it kind of spreads out the heat to get the rest of this stuff. I'm simply doing this just to clean out all that spare aluminum that's in there that didn't come out last time. Oh yeah, right here. Uh, you can't see because of the camera well, but it's it's basically all melted now. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour it out into my little little bacon sheet and then bang out the rest of the little slag and then try to pretty up that I, I just do that for fun I, I, I'm going to instantly remelt that so you'll what you'll see me do here is uh, I'll pour out the first batch in that little small can, uh, small cooking sheet, 
and then I'll put them back in and remelt them again. What I'm doing there, what I'm doing there is probably losing a lot of aluminum, but I'm trying to make sure that I don't get any slag. Kind of like making sure that the aluminum is more pure, which I guess is a is a bad idea overall. No one ever needs to do that. I don't ever think I need to do that, but I have had problems in the past of getting slag stuck. I don't mind spending the extra time and losing a little bit of uh, losing a little bit of aluminum. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm plugging up those little spots or holes where uh, the flames are shooting out kind of. I want to, I mean, you don't need to do that. I do it just to kind of maximize how much coal I can get in there and also to kind of keep the heat in. You want to keep the heat as, as contained as possible inside the little bucket. I don't have a lid, which is what something I should get. Just to, that way I don't have to use so much coal. It'll just, it'll just really heat up quick. What I'm doing right now is preparing to melt the radiator. So I put that small piece of aluminum in there and I'm trying to get it completely like liquefied, puddled, and molten aluminum. So that when I put a radiator piece in there, it's going to be slightly submerged in some already uh, liquefied aluminum. And it will, uh, it'll melt way faster that way. So I just put the first piece in. And uh, I'll give it a twist. The the um, I don't know what's in what's in there. There's probably still a little bit of a uh, old radiator fluid in there and everything. And uh, there's probably some plastics in there, and it's all burning up. And it smells so bad that I have to leave every thirty. I have to leave the garage every thirty seconds just because of how bad it smells. And you'll see me do that a lot. So this this uh, piece I'm using here is a uh, not one of the dirty. Uh, it's not one of the dirty. Uh, what's it called? Radiator parts. I had three radiators. Two of them were covered in dirt and were really nasty. This one was pretty nice, pristine. Uh, it does not smell as bad, obviously. So it didn't it obviously didn't have as much crap in it one thing i know but i've i don't i only just started using this uh graphite crucible and you see there it's almost completely melted i'm almost almost done but you'll uh i noticed that the graphite crucible starts like sweating this kind of sticky stuff that uh kind of like sticks to the sticks to the coal it's kind of weird so I'm about to do a pour right here of all the pieces I think that was three to four different uh, radiator pieces basically it's it's uh, too full for me to continue uh, without it being too heavy so that pour right there was real quick real nice got very even with that and the zoom so you can see very nice little puddles, completely pure little nuggets. Now something weird happened here. I don't know what else was in that radiator, but you can see there's a really bright light. <laughs> and uh, I I don't know what that was. I, I think... No, I, I really don't know what what it is. It's some kind of metal or material that's just glows really bright when it's that hot uh, it's pretty cool though I just got rid of most of it and this is also another thing that confuses me I don't really know what that is that I just poured in there it's not nest it's not completely aluminum because it's glowing and aluminum doesn't really glow when it's hot I don't really know what I poured there I was kind of looking at it trying to kinda figure it out but uh, yeah, it's, it's just going to go back into the mix once I start melting them again. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting another uh, clean radiator part in there, which it, this was a bad idea. I don't know why I did that. It takes so long for it to melt again without a puddle at the bottom. Um, I was just looking at the, uh, 
at the amount of aluminum I got, and I was like, that's not really a lot. Uh, it's not a lot at all. So I, I wanted to put a piece back in. But really, it just kind of wasted time. All right, so I'm going to take these guys, which I'm going to try to separate from each other. Those uh, welding gloves I'm using, are, are I just got those recently, and they are very good at refracting heat, so much so that I, I just don't even feel those uh, recently cooled uh, aluminum pieces. Uh, when I picked them up, I, I, I thought I was going to burn my hands, and then I realized how hot they were for a second. I put them down and looked at my hands, and nothing was really smoking or anything. It was, I just didn't feel it. So those things are really good at uh, deflecting heat for a short amount of time. Welding gloves are something I would very much recommend for this. So this melt's gonna take quite a long time because uh, there's so much air between each of those uh, little round pieces there, and it allows it to cool way faster than uh, I, I would like it to. But I, I don't really think there's anything I can do about it except put one in at a time and kind of wait. I think that goes a little quicker. So the way I have the blow dryer set up is kind of weird. You probably don't see an L shape on most builds like this. I did that uh, because I didn't have... When I first built it, I thought the metal pipe was going to be extremely hot. And I didn't want to connect the uh, air blow dryer directly up to it. So I had to get PVC, but I also didn't want a huge pipe coming directly upward off of it. So I did the L L type shape, which allowed me to keep the weight of the blow dryer on the ground and just kind of put a little put a little brace up underneath the joint, and uh, it it works perfectly. It's it's worked great. It also put makes the uh, speed control much further away from the from the bucket, and usually I can sit directly on top of the usually I can I can sit directly on top of the hair dryer and just control it from a distance it's real nice in this video you see me walking a lot so I'm getting ready to pour now and right there I, I messed up and I got the camera angle terrible so I'm trying something new this time and I'm trying to heat up the mold before I put the uh, before I put the aluminum in there I've seen people do it before I, I guess it kind of it, it kind of makes the metal not react so harshly when it's touched by aluminum and so here we go with the pour and you'll notice not a lot came out at all. And that's why I'm stirring to try and figure out where it all went. And I'm not really sure. There was a lot of aluminum. There was, uh, what, seven, seven little nuggets. And it only made one and a half bars, basically. Not even. One and almost a half bars. Usually it takes about three nuggets to make one, or well, like four nuggets to make one bar. And so seven nuggets should make almost two bars, but it only made one and almost a half. So, I mean, it, it feels like there was a little bit that didn't come out, and that kind of upset me. But I still got one very, very good ingot out of it. So now that the top has... Uh, stop being liquid I'm gonna pour some water on it really the ideal thing would be to uh, tip the little ingots into a bucket of water but I just didn't have one nearby at the time so I'm just pouring water on top of it to slowly cool it down and there it is that's my ingot there's the half one Thumbs up. All right, here's the final product. You can see it's very shiny. This is a this is a good example of a 
cast aluminum ingot. Uh, it's not like 100% cast. It's it's good though. It's pretty good. Yep. So there's that. Now I better add this to the rest of my ingots. I don't know how many I got. Maybe like 15 or something. Uh, or maybe like 10. I don't know. This one is the example of one that got covered in uh, slag. But yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'll probably post more of this stuff. See you later.